Hey guys, welcome back to Chipped or Dipped. This is Jared Bryan. I've missed y'all. It's been a, it's been a few days since I got to see y'all. It's been a, it's been a good few days though. I got a lot of things done with my family that was needed. We got to um, you know get a lot of things done as far as like some of the things that we were doing with the community, hanging out with uh, you know the orphanage a little bit, and um, you know it just. It's been blessed, and I um, every time I can't get on this message platform to talk with y'all, I like I long for it, and uh, I I hope it's that way with you guys. Um, I hope you guys are getting good stuff out of this. But um, anyway, I, I used to play, pray before my um, uh, messages. I washed my hands with as I'd wash my hands kind of with you, and and pray, and I prayed a, a prayer. For this, um, the words out of my mouth, like basically as a seed to take root. Um, I continue to pray that prayer, but I'm not going to be doing that in public anymore. I'm going to be doing it in private and praying in my prayer closet or praying in my. I don't have a prayer closet right now, but uh, we're we're going to be making one uh, upstairs because uh, that's what the word says. But uh, <laughs> so anyway, I I really um, I hope I hope you understand where I'm coming from with this. Because after this message, I think you will. And, um, you know, the Word, the Word of God is very powerful. The Word of God. And it's, it's something that a lot of pastors and a lot of preachers use all the time. And they, they talk about the Word of God like it's the Bible. And I'm here to say that there's a name that Jesus has... And it's called the Word of God. And he, He's the Word made flesh. And if you can understand where I'm coming from on this, it's going to help, it's gonna help um, you in understanding m- my thought process and my, where, we're at, where we're going with this ministry. Chipped or dipped, we, what we're doing, we're moving closer to following after Jesus than other ministries that I've ever come in contact with. There's only a few that I really have seen that really follow after Jesus. Part of our walk was forsaking our nets and falling after Jesus straight away like the fishermen did. And I didn't know at the time, spiritually, I'm still spiritually learning. I'm spiritually getting caught up with an action I took over a year and a half ago to step out on faith to go after and be about my father's business. It's just it's blowing my mind right now just hearing um, um, a message the other day and it just it um, it was pretty awesome there's a great platform called a voice in the desert I believe that's what it is on YouTube that they also I think have a Spanish um, version but um, he did a talk on um, I think it was the the voice um, of um, Jesus's name Jesus' name that no one knows. Something titled like that. I listened to a bunch of his messages, um, you know, the last few nights, and it was really good. And I got a lot out of it, I have to say. And a lot of it backed up my wife and I's personal walk. And uh, I was really excited. Um, and, you know, there's, just like any platform, there's going to be stuff. I believe he, um, he talks about the rapture in a way. Um, that lines up with my thought process on the rapture um, myth that I've, I've talked about how the rapture is not in the Bible. Um, I think he even says that, but he, he uses the term rapture in one of his talks. Um, so, I mean, I'm not saying that he's, I mean, he's a man. You know, all, all of us, you know, we, uh, we can take, take scripture and we can twist it or we can do things to twist towards our thought process or what's going on in our mind all of us are different and we're um we're corruptible you know it's it's just the bottom line but jesus's words his his words can't be returned void his words you know it says heaven and earth shall pass away but but i think was it 25 let's just read that real quick 25 i think it's no it's matthew 24 verses 30 35 Matthew 24, verse 35. It says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So Jesus' words shall not pass away. Okay? And this is, this is kind of what I want to do.
today in this message, I want to point everything back towards Jesus. I want to point everything back to the Word. Because if you look at all, a, lot of these, a lot of these pastors and preachers, they'll say the Word of God. Let's read from the Word of God today. Let's read from the Word of God. But really, they're taken away from Jesus whenever they said that. Because the secret name of Jesus that, you know, when he's coming back in Revelation. Let's go to Revelations real quick. This is going to be good, guys. I really am excited about this message. And um, he, you got to go back. Uh, it's called The Voice in the Desert. And he does a message on it, but it's really good. He does it with, um, you know, um, cartoon characters and stuff like that. And it's way better than, you know, probably something you see with just me talking. So I hope that will help you if you go and check him out. But um, I don't even know the guy's name because he's kind of anonymous. But uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting. But uh, let's see. It says... Um, I think it was verse 19. Um, I believe it was verse 19, wasn't it? Let's see. Yeah, 19 verse 11, okay? It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. That's not it. That's not the, the secret name of Jesus that no one knows. Um, Jesus was faithful and true. And righteous he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So that name written on him that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Right there. It's hidden in plain sight. Have you ever seen something like that that was hidden right in front of you this whole time? And, you know, you're just, you have this aha moment. You're like, whoa, there's his name. The Word of God. But it's the name that no man knew but he himself. But then right after it, in verse 13, 19 verse 13, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So right there it is. Jesus, he's the word of God. We'll go back to St. Matthew. Matthew 25 verse or 24 verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So his words shall not pass away. He is the word of God. So let's go now to John. You guys got to follow along with me. This is so good and it's going to help you with all of your, um, all of your learning in your process of growing towards Jesus, it, this is going to help you all so much. People who have messaged me on email, trying to you know seek after the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost more, um, th- this is going to help out with every single area. And um, you know, good things come to those who wait. And I'm glad that um, you know, I have people, I have brethren in my um, circle that will email me. And send different things out to me that you know it, it not only helps encourage me to study in those areas to make sure I study myself to show myself approved um, and help you know if someone has a question or has different dialect on or different idea on what that scripture means I can help look at it interpret it the way my mind works and the way their mind works and another brethren might have a different mindset a different way and, you know, I, I talked about Ravi Zacharias recently on a message. And um, one person said, hey, you know, I think he was connected to Billy Graham. And I know Billy Graham said there was multiple ways to the father. Um, he was also, he said on Joyce Meyer's platform, which I put that in my message. Um, and, um, you know, another one said, hey, I got a lot out of Ravi Zacharias. He, he was, he always... Um, gave me good inspiration I, I I seeked after Christ more after listening to him I was like that's awesome that's great man so there's certain people that will get stuff from different men different people and um, I was excited for both two different um, two different angles that one person got some stuff out of it and I said great take the meat and spit out the bones because you guys are learned 
you guys are a little further along. You know, you guys are leaders maybe in, in your your areas of, um, you know, maybe you've been around the Bible more. You've you, you've studied yourself more to like um, than most people. So, you know, the Bible more, you know, these these stories, you know, different people of the Bible and you can interpret scripture um, with some degree of, you know, intellect because you've studied certain areas of the Bible. So anyway, he was saying, you know, I got a lot of stuff. I was like, great. Take the meat and spit out the bones that you get from him. But at the same time, you got to realize that he also endorsed what Joyce Myers. Um, he also endorsed um, um, what? What did I say? It was uh, you know that uh, that platform that they um, you know um, they're saying I can't even think of them right now. It's uh, not Bethel, but the other one, they uh, Hillsong. Hillsong, he endorsed Hillsong and said they're great. And I said, a little, little leaven leavens the whole lump. When you start seeking after, or if, the, if the generation now, if they're doing occult stuff in Hillsong now, think about five, ten years how it's going to be, you know? So I was kind of coming at it the angle that way. Hey, I don't want my nephews and my nieces or, the, you know, the generation following me to um, listen to this guy say, hey, yeah, Ravi Zach, everyone, everyone, you know, has talked good about Ravi Zacharias, but then he says, oh, these people are great, these people are good, you can follow after them, and see, hey, these people are not that good, the ones that he endorsed, and then you go down, you know, these this next generation goes down a deep, dark path that's way away from Christ, and that's going after, uh, you know, reprobate, reprobate minds, and it's just, it's just a, uh, you know, a little leaven leavens the whole lump, so... Anyway, that was my message platform on that. And, um, you know, I talked about Joyce Meyer. He came on Joyce Meyer, and he, um, he talked about uh, Ravi Zachary. I said, you're a great preacher, you know, all that. And she, you know, she um, is a woman and a preacher. And that's kind of where one of the guys was like, hey, you know, I kind of line up with um, some women that can preach and teach. And I said, that's, that's good. If that's all we're disagreeing on, that's fine with me, I can still, I can still seek in this word, um, and grow, and you can still grow, if that's one of our disagreements, but that's not the only disagreement I had with Joyce Meyer, you know, because I might be wrong in that area, usurp, usurp authority, re-looking at the scripture, which we'll go and do in a second, but, um, when you, when you look at that, and you see that, uh, hey, this is, this is not, you know, when you usurp something, you're take, taking something away from someone. You're like trying to um, be in contention or like take over um, an area that maybe, you know, the man was trying to teach or something like that. So usurping authority is something different. So, you know, I could be wrong in that area. But I'm going to explain to you that when people say the, the word of God, they're, they're trying to sum it up as the whole Bible. And yes, the word... The Word of God, I'm saying, is Jesus Christ. That's my position. The Word of God is Jesus Christ made flesh. And I'm going to show you that next. We're going to go to John. But as far as like Joyce Meyer and, and things like that, she teaches a little God's doctrine. She's all about a, pros she's a prosperity preacher. So just on that alone, he was giving over to a false doctrine. You know what I'm saying? Ravi Zacharias. So if it wasn't to do with anything to do with the women preachers, that, that alone would cancel her out. But um, um, anyway, because I'm sure that, you know, it talked, I think in Luke, um, you know, it might be referring to something different, but what Mary Magdalene and, and one of the other girls was ministering to uh, the needs of people, they... They ministered to the needs, and that could be taken care of physically. That could be taken care of spiritually ministering. Who I don't know. I am a man, and I am interpreting a scripture that was written thousands of years ago. But I do know that Matthew 24, verse 35 says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So if heaven and earth shall pass away, that means all Bibles shall pass away also. Bibles will burn up when Christ comes back. But Christ is the word of God, so he shall not pass away. The word shall not pass away. His word shall not pass away. Um, but Bibles will because it's a physical, tangible thing. Do you understand where I'm coming at? 
let's get into John so you can kind of understand. Um, this is John. It says, um, let's see. John, let's go over to John. I could read you Timothy real quick. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll read Timothy because we did it the other day, but I'll read it real quick. It says, um, But I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So you're not to, you're not to, to take authority over the man. You're supposed to be in silence if the, the man is talking because the man is the head of the home. And then the head of the man is Christ. But again, this is Timothy, and this is not the four this is not the the four gospels. This is not Jesus talking. This is Timothy talking. Um, or this is um not Timothy, this is Paul talking. So you have you have this right here, because Paul is writing to Timothy, and Paul was he's my boy, he's my buddy, and I've been studying Paul lately so much, but really who trumps Paul? Jesus. So um, his words trump what Paul says. So anyway, he's talking about usurping authority. And it says, Adam was first formed, then Eve. Then Adam was, n was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. So the woman, yes, was deceived. But Adam, he, uh, you know, he let the woman, he just went right along with the sin as well. So you have to understand that that is a very, that's a very interesting subject that you'll have people fighting till Jesus comes over that subject. What I'm trying to say, the position of chipped or dipped ministries and what we're going to be doing is what we're going to do is we're going to follow after the word of Christ. We are going to keep diving into what Jesus said. What did Jesus say about this situation? What is Jesus conveying? Because there's a lot of, you know, people who can justify war and all that and um, killings and different things like that if you use different parts of this Bible. The Old Testament and, you know, different parts of this Bible. You can twist Scripture. Man can twist it to whatever they want. But if you just follow after Jesus and His words, it's very hard to get things twisted because you're following after His words exactly and you're moving in that behalf. So anyway... Um, we're going to get into John because I told you we're going to get into John. I just wanted to re-share that real quick because a few of you had messaged in different things. Um, but I really think you're going you're gonna to like this, okay? Um, and another thing, um, in John, if, um, if, you, if, well, if you go over to um, Peter real quick, let's go to Peter real quick. 2 Peter verses um, one nineteen, it says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So, a man didn't just privately come up with this stuff out of thin air. That's what he's saying. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the, the Holy Ghost, which is all to point, the Holy Ghost's job is to point you into a direction to follow after Christ and his words. That is the Holy Ghost is he's here to point towards Christ for you in your life and to seek after Christ and his words and his teachings. So um, it says this is a, a more sure um, prophecy. This the New Testament when Jesus is, has come. So right there that lets you know, hey, there's going to be some people who might twist some old words and old scriptures and different things like that. So. I mean, you can even go into the, uh, you know, there's some scriptures that just go over genealogies and different things to kind of point and kind of give you directions in this Bible towards, you know, um, to give you a bigger picture of, uh, you know, where, 
you know, your lineage came from, where the, the lines of, of descendants came from. So there's different things like that, but it, it's not going to trump what Jesus talked about. Jesus' words in this Bible are the main thing that, is, that you need to focus on. They are the main things in this Bible. You can't take doctrine from someone else and say, oh, yeah, but, you know, Paul said, Paul called, um, you know, Paul said that you can, um, that he was like a, that Timothy was like a spiritual son. Um, I know that we're, I know I want to get into John, but if you, let's go back to Timothy real quick. Because he said in the beginning, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Number two, unto Timothy, my own son in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Some people can take that scripture and say, oh, my, my own spiritual, uh, my own son in the faith. And then, then there's some people who call people spiritual fathers now because of that. They're like, oh yeah, this is my spiritual father. Or they say, oh, I'm the man of God. I'm the man of God. Like, they give themselves these different titles. And, you know, what did, what did Jesus say? He said, you go back to, you know, so, you, so one, Paul, my boy, he can be talking one way, and you're so gung-ho about what he says, but Jesus might say, hey, call no man rabbi. Call no man teacher. Call every man brethren. Yeah, I'm going to read get on this message. My, I'm about to die on this thing. So give me one second, guys. All right, guys, I promise we're going to get into John in a second, but I keep wanting to go back to Timothy because I want you all to get what I'm saying because some people, will they'll try and twist things and they'll try and put everyone, Jeremiah, they'll put David, they'll put, you know, and these guys are awesome. They'll put Joel, they'll put, you know, Peter, Paul, they'll put people in comparison right there in the same line with what Jesus said but Jesus's words trump anything in the Bible so I want you all to get that because some people will twist doctrine and they'll twist things you know like um, like I was saying about a spiritual father you know different some people are like oh yeah he's been my father in ministry you know here on earth you you're supposed to be led by the Spirit Yes, you can get things from different people, but we're brethren in Christ. We're iron that sharpens iron. So you got to be very, very careful because there's so many people who are like, the man of God, or, you know, they're like, uh, you know, in a lot of different, you know, places, they'll give themselves self-titles, Bishop T.D. Jakes, or, you know, different things like that. But I'm not going to be in the business of calling out a lot of these pastors and preachers, um, what I've learned is it's profiting little. The ones that I'm after, the people that I'm trying to help, are I'm trying to chase after the to help win souls for the kingdom. If I keep trying to um, help people that have a like a Pharisee or like or these religious people that know so much already, they. They've, they've learned so much. There's, there's spirits. It's like babes teaching babes. Uh, it, I don't, I can't, they have so much spiritual stuff like that they've learned or from the books or from other men that it's, it's, it's hard to even, it's like dealing with compacted soil if I'm trying to um, plant a seed in somewhere. The, this, the ground is so bad to plant in and the seed gets choked out before I even get a chance to plant it. Everyone knows more than than you, and everyone loves their their person of God, you know, or their 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 person that led them this way. And I'm not trying to to judge anyone in that area. God's words will judge us all in the end. I'm trying to point you towards Jesus's words, because Jesus's words, He's the Word of God. So. Anyway, this, this I hope will help you all because if you look at, um, let's go back to Timothy chapter 4. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, 
um, and commanding to abstain from meat, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. So, so there's different, you know, scenarios that people, you know, with doctrine, there's, in the latter times it talks about, you know, people will give, uh, you know, heed to false doctrines and different things like that. And I'm at, I'm in the position of, I don't want to keep coming against these different pastors and preachers. Um, you know, if you're just blatantly like Kenneth Copeland, that man looks like he's demon possessed. I would, I would venture to say that man is already demon possessed. Um, and if you spiritually cannot see that, you know, and he might have been at one time good. He might have had some good stuff coming up in his ministry. He might have been chasing the Lord. Because I know that, um, you know, even people in my family have said, you know, they've gotten stuff from him. Um, my, um, my mom has talked about how she learned words from healing and stuff like that. I, I am not in that position. I give all the honor and glory to my Father in Heaven, and uh, I, I believe that, hey, this man, you know, he might have wrote a book, you know, if, if Satan himself can deceive people and disguise himself as angel of light, don't you think that he can, he can write a book? I mean, he knows, he knows Scripture than, better than most Christians. So they can, they can, a lot of these people can write really good books, and they can write really good things that can help Christians in certain areas and grow in certain areas, even learn how to speak in, you know, speak and write and, you know, making sure you're, you're, um, speaking health and different things, right? I mean, I, I'm not in that position. I just know that, I just know that Satan is a deceiver and he deceives many and many are going to be deceived in these last days. And I hope that, you know, if, if, if family members still endorse him or seek after him, I hope they would come out of him. I have family members who have promoted Francis Chan before. I am not in a position to come into agreement with Francis Chan. There's a lot of things I don't like about him. There's, there's things that you, know, you can learn and, and know the, the, the Word. If I'm studying the Word to show myself approved, I'm growing myself and I'm trying to bring people along with me. But there's going to be people all throughout, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, that will never actually teach Jesus and preach Jesus. There's people who teach a form of godliness, and they, they, they start teaching, you know, in certain areas, maybe right, but are they actually teaching what Jesus taught? What did, they teach, what did he teach the disciples? forsake everything and get you know, give everything to the poor come after me or sell everything you own you know there's different things that you'll never hear certain pastors preach and um, I'm I'm just in a position where I believe what the Word of God says because the Word of God is Jesus made flesh and we're gonna go over that right now because we talked about revelation that was the framework that was the the name that no one knew um, and then he ends up saying it right after there, in plain sight, 19 verse 13, I believe it was. If you want to go back and read that one more time, it says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. So his name is called the Word of God. So now we're going to get into John. We're going to go to John chapter 1. Sorry, it's a little windy up here. It's... Um, blowing my Bible all around. Good thing I got all this set up. It says, In the beginning was the Word, Jesus, and the Word was with God, and Jesus was with God. And the Word was God, and the Word was God, and Jesus was God. Now let's try and say that again, and instead of putting Jesus where the Word is, let's put Bible. In the beginning was the Bible. And the Bible was with God, and the Bible was God. It doesn't line up. Also, if you go to 24, verse 35 of Matthew, it says, All things will pass away. Sorry, I got H right here. All things will pass away, but his word shall not. So, 
you realize that right there. And then if you go down a little bit, it says um, um, chapter 3. Oh, wait. So, no, let, let me read it one more time without Jesus in it or without the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, just replace that with Jesus, okay? And the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Um, so, we're going to keep on going down to 10. It says, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. So you have to believe on His name, which is the Word of God. So you have to believe on His words. So the words that He came and made flesh, the Word became flesh, it says later on. It says, um, but um, so you have to believe on His words. So you believe on Him. That's 13. Um, it says, um, no, that was 12. But as many as received Him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, the name, the word of God. Uh, <clears throat> that's what I put on the side, the word of God. You have to believe on that name. The name is Jesus, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And 14, here it is, here it is. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There it is right there. The Word was made flesh. Jesus was made flesh. So, I really hope that helps you all. That was, that was kind of big for me when I heard that because I was like, man, now I know why I always end up back in Matthew. Because the Holy Spirit keeps directing me back there. And what is the Holy Spirit's job? The Holy Ghost is, is here. You know, he said that God, Jesus said he's going to send a comforter. And he's going to send a comforter to help direct you. It's going to be more expedient when I leave, he was saying. Because he's going to help show you the way. He's going to point. I can't, Jesus was like, I can't tell you everything while I'm here, guys. I can't tell you all what's going on. You guys can't comprehend it right now. But you know what? It's going to be better for you. It's going to be more expedient for you that I go because he's going to direct you. And he's going to direct you back to my word. And the word is Jesus. And Jesus is made flesh. So, oh man, this is good, guys. Go to John Let's just, since I'm talking about the Holy Spirit right now, could I, we'll just end on this instead. Because this is the Holy Spirit. I know some of you in the email have asked, you know, you want more of the Holy Spirit. You want to grow in the Holy Spirit. This, this, is, this is why the Holy Spirit will help you. Get in, get in you know, the, um, get in the, um, the four Sonata Gospels. If you are the Sonata Gospels, I think, are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Um, but you have John also. That all points to Jesus. So these are all Jesus' words. So this is really big. Um, if you get into, let's go to John. Um, we'll go to John 14 verses 12. And we'll just read. And uh, then we'll end. Because I want to get you all some, um, some details on how the Holy Spirit points to Jesus. Okay? It says in uh, 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Okay, there it is. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay, so you need to study his commandments. 
and you need to keep them. So uh, <clears throat> 16 says, I will pray, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The comforter is going to abide with you forever. Okay? Even the spirit of truth. So he's the spirit of truth. That's another name for the Holy Spirit. Whom the world cannot receive. Because you've got to come out of the world so you can receive it. So if you're still having trouble receiving the Holy Spirit, you need to still come out of the world. There's still things that are holding you back. Do a fast. Come out of the world in certain areas that you feel that you are ensnared at. Okay? Pray and fast over that situation. Call a brethren in Christ that will fast with you. Or email them. And I'll fast with you over a certain situation. And we'll we'll knock this, we'll, we'll cast out this demonic spirit together. Alright? So anyway, um, so it says, come out of the world, basically. Let me go over to that real quick so it's not my words and it's his words. Let's see. Um, let's see. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. 20. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. 21. He, hath, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, so you have his commandments and keep them, he, is, he it is that loveth me. So you show Christ that you love him by keeping his commandments. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. He's going to manifest himself to you through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit of Truth that's going to reveal things to you. This is really good, guys. I'm getting downloads while I'm talking to y'all. Seriously, this is, this is good. Like, literally, the Holy Spirit flipped, that, flipped the pages over. I had wanted to talk about this, and I didn't know if I was going to, but literally, my marker is over there. You can see it. I'll show you. Page marker. It blew open. You see it down there? We, had, we grilled out earlier. It, it, it blew open. My Bible blew open to this area. And this is, this is me talking about the Holy Spirit who just, uh, you know, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit's like the wind. You, don't, you can't see where it comes from or where he goes, but you know he's there. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so... Uh, yeah, so this opened up to John 15, and that's why I'm reading it. <laughs> but um, anyway, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, this is um, 14 verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, um, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So abiding with you, connected to you, intertwined. 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So if you don't love him, you're not going to keep what he says. You're going to go, oh, but Matthew said, um, Matthew said to Timothy that he is my spiritual son, so I'm not going to follow after calling no man rabbi or no man teacher. You look at, you look at like, um, um, karate and all that, and they always say master. You know, that's a very big no-no. You look at the Jewish um, or Judaism; they call a lot of people rabbi. It's you're not supposed to call anyone rabbi, but they're obviously not following after his words. Okay, so you can't you can't say oh, but it's okay um, because Matthew said, hey, Timothy is my spiritual son, so I can call another man my spiritual father you understand it's it's just you're 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 kind of defeating you're shooting yourself in the foot because it's like playing blackjack if you ever played blackjack 21 um if you have um if you have 21 and the house has 21 the house wins 
Um, when we played dorm rules blackjack, uh, when I grew up, uh, I went to Shenandoah Valley Academy. Uh, it was actually uh, an Adventist academy. I'm not, I'm not Adventist. I'm a Christian, but um, I I believe they have a lot right and they have a lot wrong. But uh, there's uh, all, all de- denominations do. But uh, I um because they're all man made. But uh, I I am a Christian and I follow after Christ and um, I do respect the Sabbath day. I keep it holy, but I also worship God many days. I worship God every day of the week. I mean, I'm completely worshiping Him as much as I can. So, um, just having said that, I just want you all to know my position. But um, you can defer however you want. But I'm after. I'm falling after Christ. I'm falling after Jesus' teachings. So um, that's my position. And even more so, chipped or dip ministries. What we're doing, I am going to be more focused on following after Christ and what he talks about and what he talked about while he was teaching and preaching. And I know there's a lot of people who, you know, who teach about Jesus and teach Jesus and different things, but his actual words we're going to focus and dive into more. Um, and I'll still talk about other other areas of the Bible. I love the Bible. I'm still growing and learning and reading all areas, but these specific areas I want to master. I want to be just like someone wants to master a guitar or, you know, be a master at kung fu arts. I want to master this Bible so I can help people and help people grow and seek after Christ. So anyway, um, what, where were we at before that tangent? 24 or 25? I think I was on um, 14 verse 25. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, tells you again who he is, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's good, guys. He's going to bring all things, whatever he has said unto you. 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, let, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. <clears throat> and, I now, and now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much more with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. And the Father had to love us because he gave his only begotten Son for us. The Father loved us so much he was willing to let his Son go and be sacrificed for all of mankind. So, anyway... um, we're going to keep on going. Um, this go, let's go down to chapter 15, verse 12. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And I just said he gave his only son for you. That shows you how much he loved you. Think about Abraham, the foreshadowing of him taking up that knife, being ready to kill his son that he waited for forever. So, um, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. You are are God's friends. Ye are my friends. You are Christ's friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you, if ye do whatsoever I command you, what does he want you to do? Obey his commandments. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Mm. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Man, this is so good. 
If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. So think about all these pastors and preachers that are so beloved. The ones, all these pastors and preachers that are loved by all these people all throughout the world. Did they teach Jesus? Did they really teach what Jesus taught? Or were they loved by all? That's something to think about on your own. I'm not going to be in the business of calling out different preachers and pastors anymore. I'm going to focus on Jesus' teachings and let His Word be the judge because His words will judge us all in the end when He returns. He didn't come to judge the world. His words will judge the world when He returns. So it says, 20, remember the, wor- the, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. He's telling you like it is, guys. He's telling you like it is. Let's go to 16. There's so much good stuff in John. There's so much good stuff in these Gospels, we got to get into you guys. It's going to be good. This is where I want you to focus in. We're going to focus on what Jesus said. And it's going to trump everything else. Dorm Rules Blackjack. We played, if you had the Black Jack, Black Jack and the Black Ace, that would mean that you won no matter what. And uh, we used to play that in the dorm over at SVA. That's where I was going with that talk. Shenandoah Valley Academy. I was. We used to always play in the dorm. And we would bet... Uh, we would play for like different um, pennies and stuff and all the pennies represented money and we would also play for candy and stuff like that it was crazy it was a good time but you know um, that's what we did back in the day but anyway let's go to St. John chapter 16 verse 6 through 15 and then we'll call it a night all right it says but because I have said these things unto you sorrow hath filled your heart nevertheless I tell you the truth it is expedient, there it is, for you that I go away. For if I, not go, if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So he's going to send a Comforter to you. It's going to be expedient for you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me which is they don't believe his words because he is the word of God. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. So you can't handle them now. You can't bear what he had to say. He had to be, it was more expedient that he left so that he can give it to you and bits and pieces there's things I'm learning and growing every day daily in that if I would have gotten it all at once I wouldn't have been I I would have tanked so anyway he gives it to you in measure that you can handle and as you seek him you grow more so it says um just like a muscle when you're when you go and work out you're stretching that muscle but overnight it's growing It's not growing while you're doing the workout. It's growing overnight. So it's like he's stretching you. The Holy Spirit is stretching you to give you more. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Listen, he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he uh, he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive, for um, he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. So he's trying to his his goal is to show Christ to you and keep pointing Christ to you. And the ones that don't have the Holy Spirit are going to keep teaching a whole bunch of different things that are going to kind of go away from that. Okay? So, I'm going to end in Matthew again. I know I started in Matthew, but I really like Matthew. And we're going to get back into Matthew. Because 23 verse 8 says, But be, 
But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master. Even Christ, and all ye are brethren, and all ye are brethren. So, I wanted to go back to that. So, you're not supposed to call other men rabbi. Or Let's keep going. It says, but it says, all are brethren. Okay? And it says, and call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father, which is in heaven. So, like I said, this is Jesus' teaching, which trumps every other area in the Bible. Okay? Because this is Jesus' word, the word of God. <clears throat> but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering go in to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damage. So that's where, where we're focusing on at nights. We try and listen to Acts of the Apostles because um, it says, you know, it's going to be more expedient, Jesus was saying, when he leaves for, for us because the Holy Spirit's going to come. And if the Holy Spirit's job is to point us back to Jesus, then we're going to focus in when we read and we're going to dissect Scripture and grow in that area and keep talking about what Jesus taught. And then what we're also going to do is we are going to read some other areas, and I'm going to I'm going to be uh, doing that also with you guys. And you know, I get stuff from other parts of the Bible, but I just wanted to show you where our focus is going to be going. And um, you know, I want you all to realize that hey, you can you can kind of follow along this playbook and um, send me emails what you're getting. And as we as we follow Christ together, let me know because this is going to be good. And um, you know, there's others out there now. I'm starting to find that are doing the same thing and growing in that area. And I'm really excited about it because we need, we need the body of Christ to step up right now. And we need to, the ones that are actually seeking Jesus Christ and following after what he taught. It's, it's so far, there's so many people who are not teaching it. So I want you guys to remember to follow along with me, but I also want you to remember, don't get chipped, go get dipped. All right guys, have a great night.